We're in Brentwood, Tennessee, where these homeowners, Brent and Katie Jacobs, decided to design and plant their garden with family time in mind. Hey, Katie. Hey. This is gorgeous. Thank you for coming out. How did this all come to be? Uh, literally a patch of grass that would not grow is how it came to be. We we're behind our garage on our house that we built about four years ago. We couldn't get grass to grow back here and we thought, what if we did a couple raised beds of vegetables? So it started small. Absolutely. So we started with four raised beds that were about 12 by three feet um, and thought it would be great behind the garage because tomatoes are so ugly, tomato <laughs> plants and squash plants and that kind of thing. Um, and we were just shocked at how much time we spent out here. So every year it has grown and grown and you grown. You have three small children. Three small children, and they love it just as much as we do. They're out here eating cucumbers like bananas and picking flowers, and it's really our family time together. And it's been incredible for them to see hard work, what hard work produces, um, and they have seen us grow it from the ground up. So my husband and I, Brent, we have loaded every load of gravel and every load of dirt and everything we've done ourselves. And so it's been fun for them to see kind of the fruits of our labor. Let's talk a little bit about the bones. So do you have landscaper cloth underneath your pea gravel to yes. keep the weed? So it's a weed barrier for you. Which mostly keeps the weeds. You still have to weed Correct. the past. So I get asked Correct. a lot about that, but yes, there, uh, there's a weed barrier and then the pea gravel. Um, and then we have the uh, cedar beds, they're untreated. So I, they will last for years, but they won't last probably forever. forever. Right. And then we fill with dirt every year. We add compost to um, our dirt and till every year um, before we plant our plants. And then we plant and, and just love it throughout the summer. Do you plot and your strategy all winter on what you're gonna plant? Or Absolutely, okay, okay. it is like the game of, of switch. We like to switch beds every year. So tomatoes were in the front last year, they'll be in the back at next year. Um, it just helps the crops, you know, rotating crops and that kind of thing. Now our front beds, I love the zinnias up front. So I probably will always keep them up front because I think they're pretty nice. And this is insurance. really just for you all to use. Well, you give a lot away. <laughs> yes, obviously. And we, my kids have, <laughs> instead of a lemonade stand, they have a vegetable stand around <laughs> The block. Okay, um, well, that's. I, I bet your neighbors love so they that. Flock. Yes, because, like you said, I mean, we have thousands of tomatoes coming out of here, so I never go anywhere empty handed. I will take a basket of vegetables wherever I go in the summer, um, just kind of spread the love. Well, I can't wait to see some of yes, these individual beds. I can't beds. wait to show you. Let's explore these vegetables. You have squash. Yeah, squash is coming in hot right now. We're in the beginning of the summer, so that's always the very first vegetable to come. So, squash and zucchini and my grandmother used to make the best squash casserole, so I make her squash casserole every summer, and it's our family favorite thing. So Do you we, use the blossoms as well as the, the fruit? Yes, okay. yes, stuffed squash blossoms are and incredible. what is going on up here? <laughs> so we have four different types of cucumbers growing over these arches, um, and this is like a Mexican gherkin, and don't they look like little tiny watermelon? I mean, I just think the kids are obsessed. Well, that's what I thought it was when I first walked <laughs> up here. <laughs> They're just like the cutest little cucumbers that look like little watermelons. So and you mentioned you sow, you sow right directly in the ground, most of your things. Yes, most of our things. We get some from the Franklin Farmer's Market. Um, we do start some seeds indoors, but I really like to just plant in the dirt and go. And we've had really great luck with that. So yeah, these cucumbers started. This is our first year to grow this, this oh, variety. You'll be growing them again next year. <laughs> they are so fun. And so we have peppers behind you. Yes, and we have the little lunchbox um, peppers, which the kids love because they're not spicy. They can just bite right into them. Um, but we've got bell peppers. I've got some hot peppers in the back. I try to hide those in the back so the kids aren't grabbing those, uh -huh. um, you kind of have to strategically plan. When you have kids picking, um, you don't want them to grab a hot pepper. So we keep all the, the friendly peppers up front and then I'll keep the hot peppers That's in the back. That's actually good advice. I love this combination here because it kind of tears up. What's yes. going on here? So we've got uh, Swiss char, rhubarb, leeks, I got a watermelon hidden in there. Um, and then this is our spicy peppers and then tomatoes. So um, it's fun because the kids love they would never know what Swiss char is if we weren't growing it. And I love that the stalks are different colors and it just teaches them and incredible things about the earth and how things grow and inspired by vegetables of all things. It's an ornamental for plantings in the fall for too. Sure. Yes, yes, it yes, is, yes. it's really beautiful. And you do companion planting, I saw. Yes, I do, I love to plant things that go together logically. I mean, there are charts about companion planting and what you should plant together, but logically, you know, 
tomatoes and basil go together and, and that kind of thing. And it makes a beautiful presentation as well. So let's talk about all these tomatoes. You said the cherry <laughs> tomatoes are on the, the trellis or the arbors yes, there. Yes, so the cherry tomatoes will reach all the way over the top of... Um, are you staking those arches? or weaving them in as they're growing? So I'll or? weave them in okay. as they go and I kind of trim them up, um, the branches below, that, which encourages growth to the top. Um, actually, the suckers are what kind of makes the vine so you okay. don't pop the suckers off the cherry tomatoes. And this is like the kids' mecca. This is what they run to when they come out here. They pop the cherry tomatoes in their mouth. So I see we have is, some pears and we have pear yes, cherries, we've regular got pear cherries. cherries. We've got the millions. We've got, they. yeah, they love the, um, the golden yellow pears. The and best. how many varieties of, let's say, full-sized <laughs> tomatoes? We've got about 24 <laughs> varieties. Um, do you do all heirlooms or do you mix and? No, we mix and match. Okay, we, okay. I do love the heirlooms and I love like the orange accordion tomatoes and kind of the fancier ones, but we also love like the big boys and the Cherokee purples for BLTs throughout the summer. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about herbs. Our favorite. Our favorite, Yours are, are we you? agree. <laughs> so we're standing in front of one of your raised herb beds. Yes. What's in this one? This one is thyme, rosemary. We got some chamomile, so pineapple sage, sage parsley, chives, um, and some alliums grown in. I know you love to cook. Yes. And I'm assuming that you use all these Yes, herbs. yes. And that's why I think I love it so much. Like you were saying, it's all usable. Like, mm -hmm. and it is so simple to grow. It's really beautiful. It repels bugs, it's fragrant. Um, I think anybody starting a vegetable garden should start with herbs. Good point. And close enough so if you're gonna cook, you can go out and snip it without Absolutely. having to be a country mile to and, get to it. And teach your children what they are. So when you're <laughs> like, can you go grab me so it's two sprigs of rosemary? Uh -huh. They know exactly what to run out and get. Oh, that's a good idea also. <laughs> yes. Yes. Not only vegetables, but you have flowers as well. Flowers, yes. I want to talk about these dahlias. Yes. You said you didn't dig them up in the fall. No. Okay, so the year before last, I dug them up and I tried my hardest to keep watch of them. They dry rotted, uh -huh. um, which I think they do a lot. Yes. So this last fall, I was like, I'm just going to leave them in the bed. and I will never dig them up again. That's probably why they're so far ahead of everyone else's. They're so else's. far yes. ahead because they popped up. They're so happy. Yeah, I didn't get them till the end of summer last year, and they're all summer long this year. So uh, I think in zone seven, I, I think unless we have a tragically cold winter, like mm -hmm. sometimes we do, I think you can totally leave them in. I also saw some Queen Anne's lace, some larkspurs, some yes. zinnias. So my husband is from a long line of vegetable growers. They're farmers from Menville, cattle farmers. They've always had vegetable gardens. I come from a long line of flower gardeners. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, my grandmother had a gorgeous Williamsburg, very traditional garden. My mom has beautiful gardens out of her property. So I just love and know flowers. Um, so I knew when we put in this garden, we would have to have flowers. And it is an incredible support system for the vegetables. I see a lot of people on Instagram like hand pollinating their squash and things like that. Um, and I never have had to even think about doing that because we are just overrun with the pollinators and the bees love our garden and the flowers just attract so all So have that. you converted Brent? to be a flower person <laughs> as well? Absolutely, okay. yes, okay, okay. absolutely. Oh my gosh, he is all about the sunflowers and, and the wildflowers and that kind of thing. So yeah, yes, I saw yes. your sunflowers in this bed weren't quite ready, but yes. you have another field that looks awesome. <laughs> yes, we can't get enough. If it's a, <laughs> a plot of land, it's like, what can we plant? So yes, what more flowers, the better. I cannot believe what's going on here. Everything's coming in. Everything's coming in. We've got sunflowers and corn. Um, so the sunflowers are maybe a week or two from popping. Um, so they'll fill in. This is kind of Brent's love language. Um, he's got corn and we've got enough room what thankfully kind of corn? for enough corn. Um, we've got the sweet okay. corn, yeah. And behind us is dill. Do you, yes. pick, do you pickle as well? Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. So we've got enough cucumbers to sink a ship. So yeah. um, we've got enough dill too. And I love letting it go to seed and keeping the seeds. I and just I think love it's just the aroma. So beautiful. Katie, I want to tell you, thank you so much thank you. for letting us come and visit your beautiful garden, your raised beds. It's only four years in the making, but right. it is awesome. You have to come back next year and see what we expand. Uh, okay, next okay. Year. I follow you, so we'll, we'll see. Goats it. or ducks, yeah, I think yeah, goats on the or list. Ducks. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Katie. Thank you, Sherry. If you like gardening, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. 
We showcase gardeners, plants, and the joy that growing can bring.